Hi folks, hope you are doing great. In this video, I am going to show you how to uh, talk to ADFS through WSO2 identity server. In other words, how to do outbound federation with WSO2 identity server to ADFS. So the end-to-end -end use case would be uh, you try to log into Salesforce, which is your service provider. And for Salesforce, the trusted IDP is WS2 Identity Server. So you get redirected to WS2 Identity Server. Then WS2 Identity Server acts as an identity broker and will redirect you to ADFS. Then you log into ADFS, then come back with a SAML response. Then Identity Server will validate that SAML response and then issue its own SAML response to Salesforce. So that's the end to end use case. I already did a demo. On the first part like how to log into salesforce with ws2 identity server i'll share that link in in this video description and also i did a demo on how to set up adfs okay uh, i'll share the link uh, for that too now in this demo i'm going to show you how to add adfs as a trusted idp to ws2 identity server and then how to register ws2 identity server as a trusted service provider in ADFS, then see how the end-to-end -end flow works. First, you need to log into the uh, Windows server uh, where the ADFS is running. Okay, go to Windows Administrative Task or Administrative Tools. Click on ADFS Management. Now we need to add a WS2 identity server as a trusted reliant party to ADFS. So click on reliant party trust and click on add new reliant party trust here. Claim aware start and we need to pick this entry. Enter data about the reliant party manually. Click next. Give a name here. It can be any name. I'll just say WS2 IS. Next. And here you can uh, enable support for SAML 2 web SSO protocol. Right? Then you need to give the assertion consumer URL pointing to the WS2 identity server that is HTTPS localhost, the host name of the WS2 identity server, and the port 9443 is a default port, and then common node. Okay, this is the assertion consumer URL of wso2 identity server then click next so this should be the service provider entity id let's give it as ws 2 is but it doesn't need to be the same as display id we need to remember this one when we create a trusted idp in wso2 is side we need to have the same value next permit everyone yeah, so that's basically it. You can see the endpoint. Okay, click next. And now we can finish. Okay, so now uh, uh, we want to send some claims in the SAML response generated by the ADFS. So under Relamp Part Trust, click on this uh, the service provider that you just created and click on Edit claim issuance policy and click on add rule okay then pick send LDAP attributes as claims next give a name let's say WSO to IS claim rule okay I need to send the email address of the user in the name ID or the subject of the summer response okay you need to pick name id when i when we pick name id as the outgoing claim type then the email address of the authenticated user will get added to the subject element of the saml response we need to pick active directory as the attribute store done so that's all we need to de do uh, at the adfs side and also make sure you have a user uh, you can go to administrative tools again click on 
active directory users and computers so i have already created a user here called peter and peter's email address is gamage at facilelogin.com okay so this is the login name that's all we need to do from the adfs side now let's go back and configure adfs as a trusted idp in wso2 identity server okay so if you hear about wso2 identity server for the first time it's an open source identity and access management product released under the most business friendly apache 2o license you can go to wso2.com and products identity and access management and download wso2 identity server latest version it's is 530 at the time of this recording and i have already downloaded it once you download it you need to uh, have jdk 1.8 plus and also set up the java home that's all then you can go inside wso2 identity server home directory and then bin directory then start the server with wso2 server dot sh it will take around 40 to 50 seconds to get started in my local machine okay till we get till 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 the identity server gets started let's uh, let's go and access the metadata xml file of the adfs we need that okay so you need to access the metadata xml file from this url right it should be the host name of your uh, ADFS server, then federation metadata, then feder uh, federation metadata.xml. Okay. So I'll post this link to the description section of this uh, video. Once you click on that, you can download the federation metadata XML file. Okay, this includes a metadata metadata about the ADFS. Maybe we can have a look at that file if you go to XML grid.net and they are open file browse and let's pick this file okay here you can see uh, the metadata about the adfs server so we are going to use this in a minute when we create the uh, trusted idp at the ws2 adp server site now the server got started now you can log into the wso2 identity server to localhost nine four four three. This is a default port. So our install starts on the HTTPS port nine four four three, and I can log in with admin admin. Those are the default credentials. Our identity server comes with an embedded LDAP server, and in production deployment, you can deploy it over an LDAP. Uh, or an active directory or even a database here i have already configured salesforce as a trusted service provider and i should be able to log into salesforce i in fact did a video on this uh, i'll post that link uh, to the description of this video now if we go and open a new private window now i get redirected to salesforce and then from salesforce to the WC2 identity server. Here I can log in with my default credentials uh, which comes from the underneath the uh, LDAP user store. Okay, so now I am logged into Salesforce with my local credentials. But this is not what I want to show you in this demo. So this demo uses my local credentials behind WC2 identity server. In today's demo, I want to show you how WC2 identity server can redirect you to the adfs so you get get you get redirected to identity server from sales source then identity server will redirect you to adfs so that's what i want to show you okay, let's close this browser now i need to introduce adfs as a trusted idp to wc2 identity server you need to go to identity providers click on add you can give any name i'll give it as adfs and then you need to go to federated authenticators here SAML to web SSO configuration so we connect to ADFS over SAML then I need to give service provider entity ID this is what we gave uh, at the ADFS side when creating the trusted reliant part it should be the same name it's WSO2IS and I also need to enable 
similar to web business so okay then i need to give identity provider entity id and also nsso url so this information can be found from the metadata xml that we downloaded before okay so this is the entity id just copy that url and paste it here okay. and then sso url you need to expand this section idp sso descriptor and under that single sign on service you can pick any of these bindings w2 identity server supports both let's pick this url it's the same in fact pick that one and paste it here right. so here remember so this is the host name you need to have the same host name okay so i need to put an etc host entry to my machine to this particular domain name okay let me show you how to do that So here I need to open up the etc host host file. My ADFS server is running on an EC2 instance, so I need to map this host name. Okay. I need to map this host name to the IP address of my EC2 machine. Okay. So that I have already done. Okay, let's go back here. So it's done. Uh, then that's all I need to set up here. I'll put put this one as as per request. Make this as per request. Uh, that's it. You need to do from this side, from the editor server side. Okay, so this is fine, let's register it. Okay, one more thing, uh, we didn't upload the certificate. So we need to upload the ADFS certificate, which it uses to sign the SAML response, right? So, uh, so that this is how we associate the trust between WS2 identity server and the ADFS. So that certificate is in this metadata XML file. So this is a metadata XML file. And if you expand the key descriptor here, and the IDP SSO descriptor, key descriptor, and signing key info, XIO9 data. So this is a certificate. Right? So this is in the PEM format. Edit this one and copy this value. Copy it properly. And then we need to create a PREM certificate out of this. Okay. So I have a backup here. Let me open it up. Uh, okay, this is a sample PREM file. So PREM file starts with uh, begin certificate and then ends with end certificate. So we need to paste what we copied here. I think I didn't copy everything. Okay. Make sure you copy it properly. Okay, this time I copied it properly and there are more additional stuff. Let's remove this too. Okay. Then remove this one too. It's additional stuff. So now we have a PEM file for ADFS. Close it. Now we need to go back to the identity server management console, browse, and pick that file. Okay, if we can upload this without any errors, so that means we have done our task fine, we have copied it properly and pasted in that particular PEM template. Okay, it looks fine. If you go here, yeah, so you, you can see the certificate date. Uh, so that's it uh, in setting up the trusted IDP. Now we need to go back to the service provider and engage this IDP to the service provider. Go here, 
local and outbound authentication configuration. It's configured to talk to the identity server's default user store. Now we need to federate. Pick ADFS here. Update. Okay. Now let's see. Let's see what happens. Okay. Let's open a new private window and paste this URL. Now this time it will take me directly to the ADFS. Okay, now I'm on ADFS. Now I should be able to log in with my ADFS username, Peter, and password. Okay. Now I'm on Salesforce. So here you can see what happened. So Salesforce initiated a SAML request sent to identity server. Identity server federated you to the ADFS. Then you log into ADFS. ADFS generated a SAML response, sent it to identity server. Then identity server created its own SAML response, signed by itself and sent it to Salesforce. So that's the end-to-end -end flow. Uh, so that concludes the demo today. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comment section below this video. Thank you very much.